This is Mr. Raiden. We are on 6.2 Archimedes Principle, and we are still in fluid mechanics. And yes, that is a picture of a naked guy in a bathtub yelling Eureka. And I can tell you, after you watch this podcast, watch out, neighbors. You might be running down the street naked yelling Eureka as well. Um, when we're talking about Archimedes Principle, we are talking about buoyancy. Okay, let me show you what buoyancy is. You take a look at this this big aluminum thing. And that aluminum block, it weighs 132.3 newtons. It's 13.5 kgs, weighs 132.30 newtons. And you can see that little scale measures the normal force, right? The normal force. And the force of gravity is equal and opposite to the normal force. Now, if I drop it in water, look what happened to the normal force. The normal force went down. It went down. It, it was at 132, and now it is at 83.3. What happened to the normal force? It went down. The apparent weight went down because there must have been another force involved. Force of gravity has still stayed the same because the mass is the same. Gravity is the same. But what is different is the water gave it a force of buoyancy. Um, if we take a look at something like a, like a brick block, here, this brick block, 98 newtons. But when it's in water, you can see what happens is it's 49 newtons. And we can find out what the buoyant force is by just subtracting these two numbers. But there are some things that, are like like styrofoam, a styrofoam block, which weighs 7.35 newtons, it's 0.75 kgs, and, but what happens to a styrofoam block is it floats. So if I push it underwater, you can see what happens to the water level. It r rises up. But if it just sits there, it's going to float. So we're going to be able to investigate all of these things using Archimedes' principle, and let's get to it. Let's take a look at a rock that's just being suspended by a rope. What are our two forces acting on it? We have the force of gravity, which we call weight, okay, mass times gravity. And we also have the tension. They're equal and opposite. Both these arrows are the same, which means if the weight is 100 newtons, the tension is going to be 100 newtons. But when it goes in water, the gravity still is 100 newtons, but the tension has decreased. Because the force of buoyancy, there's another force involved that add together to become equal and opposite to that force of gravity. And let's take a look at what this force of buoyancy is. We know what the force of gravity equation is. It's mass times gravity. Tension is a result of those two forces. So we have to have an equation for the force of buoyancy. And the equation for the force of buoyancy is rho v g. Rho, which is density, v, which is volume, g, which is gravity. And more specifically, the rho is the density of the fluid. The density of the fluid. Not the object, the density of the fluid. The volume is the volume that is submerged. If it's completely submerged, guess what? It's the entire object. And it's the water that has been displaced. It's the volume that's been displaced times gravity. So it's the density of the fluid, volume of the submerged object, and gravity. Okay, let me take a look at a problem just real quick. Um, this is a uh, figure shows an object of mass four kilograms. So if it's not in this um, this water, we know it's going to weigh about 40 newtons. That will be its normal weight when it's out of the water. But when it's in the water, it said that it weighed only 30 newtons, which meant if it used to weigh 40 newtons and now it only weighs 30 newtons. What is that force of buoyancy? 10 newtons. That makes sense, right? The water is producing a force of 10 newtons to lessen that tension, to lessen that tension. Now, if we want to find the density of the fluid, we go to force of buoyancy equals rho v g. The force of buoyancy, of course, is 10 newtons. The rho is, we don't know, that's what we're trying to find. The volume is 0 0.00083 meters cubed. And gravity, of course, is 9.8, okay, or 10. And so the density of our fluid, if we ended up calculating this, all we have to do is a simple division problem, and it ends up being about 1,200 kilograms per meter cubed, because that is the units of density, is kilograms per meter cubed. Pretty easy problems, isn't it, guys? Um, we do have probably the most difficult buoyancy problem is when something's floating, okay? But really, it's not difficult if you know your forces. Here we still have a force of gravity, mass times gravity, and we have a force of buoyancy. There's no tension here because there's no rope. There's no normal force because there's, it's not sitting on the bottom of the, the ocean surface. It's floating there. And so the force of buoyancy is equal and opposite because it's not moving. It's not accelerating. Okay, So that means the force of gravity is, again, equal and opposite to the force of buoyancy, which means the mass times gravity 
is equal to the rho vg. Now, the mass of an object, if you remember what our formula is for density, density equals mass over volume, okay? So the mass of an object, you could say it is the density of the object times the volume of the object. Just take a look at that equation above. Mass is equal to density of the object times the volume of the object times, of course, gravity. Okay, and over here, that density for buoyancy is the density of the fluid or the liquid here. Okay, and the volume is the volume that has been submerged, the submerged times gravity. And and if you see, we've only has this amount that is submerged. Only this volume is coming into play for the volume that is submerged. Okay, but if you think about it, if I do this in red. The volume of the entire object, okay, the entire object, that entire object deals with the mass times gravity, the volume of the mass times gravity. Now, there is one nice thing is that gravity cancels out of this equation, and we end up having density of the object times the volume of the object equals density of the fluid or liquid times the volume that has been submerged. Or we could also say that that could be the volume that was displaced because all that's displaced, if you go sit in your tub right now, the volume that you are submerged is the volume that is displaced. Now you can go out, run naked in the streets, and yell, Eureka!